Thank you. So, um, Godwin, can you give us a quick recap? Mm, just in addition, you know, you mentioned when you were explaining, you talked about Azure platform, talked about model <coughs> visualization, and then cloud. Mm, so, okay. Um, hi, Kelvin. Hi. Uh, apologies, I. I got to know you were not able to make the class yesterday, right? Yes, I wasn't. Okay. Um, then I think I was aware. I was told that the recording was sent to you. Were you able to go yes. through it? Okay, so not you were able yet. to go through it? Not yet, though. Ah, you didn't go through it? I have not, but I'll go through it. Please do. So, Please do. You can see those... Yeah. Uh, our brothers and sisters that came around, you can see how they are how they are really talking about what they learned yesterday. Okay. Um, fantastic, Debbie. I'm present, sir. Yes, ma. <laughs> can you tell us what you do, what you learned yesterday? Okay, I. What I learned yesterday, you talked about different platforms where we can save our works and then share it. You talked about um, Power BI and then um, Power BI and then Cloud. And then also that Power BI is um, can be personal and also can be shared, but not automatically. It's shared based on our own permission, like we give permission for it to be shared. And then there's some sections in Power BI, which is a um, session for creating reports for data and then for modeling. So. Wow. Wow. I, I was, um, I'm amazed. Thank you, everybody. In fact, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Um, this is, that, that's pretty much. All right. So. <laughs> yes, that's 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 good. Oh, All right, so and you can mute your mouth. You can mute your mouse, um, your mic rather, please. So that if if okay, this is Teams. I want to believe that we some of us are used to Teams. So if you have any question, you can go to you can unmute your mouth, mic, and then ask your question, or perhaps. There's a place in Teams where you can raise your hand. You know, it works. You know, it's very similar to that of uh, Zoom, where you can raise your hand. So, okay. Um, all right. So after having you know this this recap, it shows that um, the two hours, almost two hours we had yesterday, has not been a waste. So I remember where we stopped. We stopped at uh, trying to explain to you how our Azure platform works. So we stop at where how our Azure platform works, and then how we all can take advantage of of our Azure platform. Okay. So like I said. It's a very interactive class. Interactive in the sense that you can drag us back. How do I mean? Because number one, you have paid for this class. So which means that you must get value. Like my Ogad would say, because the Ogad that I am in, the madam that, that is welcoming all of you is my Ogad. So if I don't teach you very well, she won't pay me my salary. So I want her to pay me very well. So if there is anything that you don't understand, drag me back. Let us have a thorough understanding of the concept. So it's better. Um, I think when Kevin was talking, Kevin spoke of how it was Kevin that said something about social media, right? Like he's been doing something on social media, and then you know that he needs some tech skills. Of course. So this is one of the fastest growing tech skills you can you can get in the market. Why? Because number one, it's um it's um Number one, the amount of data being generated 
alone is it, it, it's enormous. So I know you can see my screen. So if I type, if I type, if I type the amount of data generated on the internet, can you see this? This is roughly 2.5 quintillion trillion bytes. Roughly 2.5 quintillion trillion bytes. So if you need to break this down, Hello. Can anyone hear me now? Can anyone hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, good. I my internet went yeah, off. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. okay, my internet went off. That was it. That was right. Okay, so you are you want to call yourself a data analyst. What do you want to be analyzing? That's the first question you need to ask yourself. What do you want to be analyzing? Data. And how does your data how how, how do you measure your data? In bytes. You understand what I mean? In bytes. Okay. So if they are telling you that your data, is the amount of data that goes into into on, into the internet daily, that you and I are generating, that is what you want to analyze. So, what is the size of of quintillion? How many zeros is your quintillion? So you to just have an idea of what we are doing. So here now, you are having Of course, all of us know what a gigabyte is. So if I say one million gigabytes, if I say one thousand megabytes. I'm talking of one one gigabyte. You understand? But we are looking at we are looking at hundred million gigabytes inside this hundred million gigabytes. So on a daily, on a daily, every day. The internet generates over 100 million. 
estaban. One of them million gigabyte. So that is in a day. In just one day, over 100 million gigabytes of data. So multiply this by, by 365. Hi, Kelvin. Please, can you mute? Thank you. Please, can you mute? So multiply multiply this by 365 days. That's the amount of data you will, you will be exposed to. That's the amount of data. please can we can we hold me, please? Okay, thank you. So that's the amount of data you will be exposed to. So that means as the data analyst. You cannot be out of job. In fact, your job will overwhelm you. Why? Because the data is people get as we are working now, as we are having this class, we are generating data. Hope you all know the voice that is being recorded, the video that's been recorded, the you know, the amount of um, information we are passing across, they are data. Do you understand? So we need to get knowledge that will help us analyze this data later in life. So to continue with that, I was trying to expose us to a platform owned by Microsoft called call Microsoft Azure. So I remember this is where we stopped yesterday. This is where we stopped yesterday. And if you look at the platform, like I said, the platform is like a window into another world entirely. Like a window into another world entirely. So, like I said, Two or three people coming together saying, okay, we have this big money. Can we have some dedicated servers? Can we have some dedicated machines, some dedicated computers? Can we have some servers? Can we have some networking tools? And then begin to rent it out. You understand? That's exactly how your cloud works. That's exactly how your cloud works. Where you have dedicated server, where you have dedicated networks, where you have dedicated machines. And the, like I said, they now sell that space to people. And then it becomes like a shared environment where everybody can work and that is it. So if I, because, because I have an account on this, if I log in now, you definitely see how the environment looks like. So you just need to know this environment. You just need to know, okay, this is how the environment looks like. Now, the moment I opened into this environment, you can see this thing. It's called, you can, it's called subscription. You have to subscribe into it. So, I, mean, I have two different subscriptions. One has $36 only. Another one has $107 only. Do you understand? Of course, your subscription will have a name. You, 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 when you come to the home, don't worry, you. It's just me. as a matter of time, you will understand it. It's not, it's not, um, there's nothing to rush. OK. 
Okay. So here you have access to Here you will have access to a lot of resources. As you can see, virtual machine. And what's your virtual machine? Your normal laptop. Your normal laptop, your normal machine. You can, you can, can you remember this is our Power BI, if you remember from yesterday. You can embed your Power BI into it. So which means you can also use this platform for your analytics. You can also use this platform for our analytics. Then you can create user. For example, in the course of this training, we will, we will add you to this platform so that you can also work and see how it looks like. You understand? You can create user. There's a whole lot. There's a whole lot. So if I go to, uh, let's say, marketplace, let's say, marketplace, I say marketplace, this is where all resources are resided, all of them. So you see, get started. Get started means these are resources. All you see you are looking at, they are resources. All of them, they are resources. But these resources are categorized as in different, different category. So if I come to this category now, Abby, Mr. Tolu, ah, I want to learn AI. I want to learn machine, uh, machine learning. These resources can help you. If you have heard of AI before, can you signify AI, artificial intelligence? I've heard of it before. Okay, that's a fantastic debut, right? Artificial intelligence. Who else? Yes, sir. Who else? Who else have I heard of? I have, I have a... Mr. Tolu, how about you? Have you heard of artificial intelligence before? Hello? Hey. Yes, I've heard of it before. These are Adeji. Oh, okay, are Adeji, you're welcome. So, yeah, you. so, one way or the other, people have heard of artificial intelligence. So whether we like it or not, that's the future. In fact, let me tell you the truth. After your data analytics, after your data analytics, as in, after you said you have learned it, you have mastered it, you are working with it, you are making money with it, the next big thing you should run after is this thing called AI and machine learning. After your data analytics, it's an advice. It's an advice. Why? If you want to stay relevant, if not, those machines, those codes, put you out. Yes, because in the space of technology, every three, three years, five, five years, the whole place is changing. Things, new things are coming out. So now is the era of AI and machine learning. So after the data analytics that you know, okay, you are now can do is go and learn. Why? Because the foundation for your AI and machine learning is your data analytics. The foundation for this is this. So if I click on AI and machine learning now, it's going to give me different tools that I can use to learn, to learn or deploy or use AI and machine learning. If you see something like Azure Box, Quick Boss, improve training data, can you see? You want to train your data. You can actually train your data. Remember, I was showing you data yesterday. You can generate data, you can copy it, but this time you can train it to do what you want it to do. Then you have cognitive services. Of course, by now, you, some of you in this class will know what your cognitive services is. Let me show you one of your cognitive services. I want to show you what one of your cognitive services is. Can you see that? I'm just speaking a random video.
I'm picking a random video on YouTube and it's playing. All right. Can you notice that I changed the video? Did you notice that? Yes, 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 yes. The dance short video was just plain sound. It was just plain sound. So I choose another. I chose another video where they show Elon Musk. And then I will tell. I will ask this question: What you, what you notice? I'm going to be asking what you notice here. Hi hey guys, so who can tell me what you notice? I'm waiting, I'm waiting because of our time. Who can tell me? Hello, student. Anybody? The network is breaking. Okay. Anyone else? What's the question, sir? I'm saying I was looking at this video. So once I played that video, what do you notice? Okay, there's a trans transcribe of what he's saying. Did you hear that? Once I played this video. <laughs> See that there's a distance. understand now. There is a transcription going on. You will also notice that on your YouTube on Facebook, if you are doing live feed to on Facebook or some, some other applications, there's a transcription going on. You get according to you, the person that just spoke. There's a, tran a transcription going on. So that is a cognitive service. So how do a video be playing and then something is already transcribing what is being said? On a live video, live video means that as you are streaming it, you know, the computer is not even, is not thinking of what you are going to say. Like you are streaming something, maybe if you, if you have been to an event, and then they are streaming the event, and the person is speaking, and you will see this transcription going on. Sometimes it can be wrong. Maybe you know what I mean. But that is a cognitive service, something that is making the computer to think. Do you understand? So you can see the area of your AI and your machine learning. Do you get the, do you get the idea? So the next one is your analytics. So you will begin to see something like big data. I don't know if you have ever heard of big data. You know, your big data is that of those stuff that are being generated on the internet. Why? They are big because they don't have a tool that can analyze them. How do you analyze video, audio, images? When they are not figure one-on-one, one-on-one, -on -one, you understand? So they call them big data. They look at this. 
this is what you are ascribed to do, data analytics. So what this is telling you is that so what this is telling you is that these are tools that you can use for your data analytics. Now you can see your Power BI, Elasticsearch, different, different ones. Something on data insights. That is, you want to have an insight into what you are using. Look at this predictive analysis, analytics. That is, you can predict what can happen, may looking at your data into the future. You can predict into it. I know some of you here on this class will begin to value this information. Why? Right? Because you know what I'm talking about. Now look at this real time or stream analytics. So which means that as you are generating that data right now, right now, real time, real time, real time, real time, as you are generating it, then you can begin to analyze this. Then all analytics, every form of analytics, stuff that can do it. You want to look at blockchain? Maybe some of you will have heard of blockchain technology before, or you have heard of uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all of those stuff. But there's a technology that those things are running on. You can also learn those technology. But that one, that one is not for this class anyway. That one is not for this class. So it's not for this class anyway. Then you can do compute. Now, what are the computes? These are your normal machines. That you can also deploy and then work on. So, for example, for example, I have a, I have a machine here. Okay, so I will show you the machine later. Then you can do database. Maybe you've heard of ah database, this, that. Now, all of these things, they are on the cloud. They are there. They are, they are tools that you can take advantage of to lend them and then make money with them. So here you have a repository of all those knowledge in one platform called Microsoft Azure. Like I said, it is the cloud version of Microsoft. Amazon have their own to call AWS. Google have their own called GCP. Google Cloud Platform, Oracle to have their own, IBM to have their own. Those big, big players in the marketplace, they have their own. Maybe some of you that use that use iPhone, you must have heard something like iCloud. But that's just a storage cloud service. It's a form of storage, it's a form of cloud too. You understand? But unlike these guys, maybe one way or the other, you've heard somebody talk about DevOps. I know Mr. Tolu once talked about this, DevOps. So I'm looking for a platform to learn DevOps. This is a perfect place. Okay. So then we move on. Let's say we want to do Internet of Things. So whether we like it or not, we are moving to the world of Internet of Things, where everything is connected. Your TV is talking to your fridge. Your fridge is talking to your remote. Your remote is talking to your door. Your door is talking to your curtain. Your curtain is talking to your what's the, all these things in the kitchen. Microwave. You know what I mean. Internet of things. All those devices are connected together as one. And once they are connected together like that, they are beginning to speak, speak, speak to themselves. Now the question now is. Now the, the question now is. Where do you find yourself after three months of this training? I'm, I'm telling you all of this in order to jigger your memory, to dig, to ginger you into, you know, taking this thing that you have paid for so seriously. Now, we move into, okay, we can also do networking here, maybe for people that are purely into networking, you know, this might be a bit, okay, so, for the likes of Mr. Tolu, who, who, who really want to go into IT and, you know, so Mr. Tolu, I'm you know, specifically mentioning you because I know we have a conversation. So 
these are things you can also learn, take advantage of. You understand? Take advantage of. Then the last one here, of course, let's say, so the storage, the security, there's web. Hello, I can't hear it. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Maybe you should check from your hand. Okay, please check from your hand. So the storage. All right. So whereby as a as an organization, you might need a, a very large amount of storage. You understand? But of course, for your own level, you might not really need it. But one of the things that you can also take advantage here is look at this. This CB that now makes this is five SharePoint. Maybe the likes of um, Mr. Kyle D. Your line is your internet is breaking. I don't know. Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. It's fine for my hand. It's fine for my hand. Please check your. Yeah, it's not very no, one yet. Or maybe change your location because it's fine for everyone. Okay. So, because I know there's somebody in this class that will discuss this. This is Dynamic 365 SharePoint. You know what this does? is scoop all your data together for you. And it's easier for you to analyze and then work with them. Finally, on this place, you have your web. So, which means that for people that, are, that want to do backend, web development, you know that, and then you want to take advantage of the cloud and all of that. Yes, but whether you like it or not, your web to generate data. Your web to generate data. A lot of things can be measured, a lot of data can be measured on your web. Number one, the traffic. You know what the traffic means. It means the number of people that is visiting that website. For example, your Facebook page. You know that a lot of people visit Facebook. A lot of people visit Instagram. A lot of people visit LinkedIn. A lot of people visit Twitter. You understand? So you have more people visiting. In fact, in the whole world, the greatest, the, the highest number of visits is on Google.com. We all know that. You understand? So the people that owns Google, you know what they do? They take advantage of those data. The people that own Facebook, they take advantage of those of those data. I was in a conversation with a friend of mine uh, over the weekend, over this week, in the course of the week. Um, we're having a conversation, and then she said, "I don't understand these people." I said, "What happened?" She said, "That these days, when she talk about research like this, she just be getting messages on research." She's just getting, you talk about, uh, you know, those stuff that she talks about. Just be getting, you know, she said, don't you know that you're being monitored? <laughs> she started laughing. Yes, the mobile device you are holding is a form of monitoring. They monitor, they get data from you. They get information from you. You are in a conversation with a friend about wristwatch. Before you know it, you are getting one email selling wristwatch. You know what I mean? Why? Because they are taking a lot of information from us and they are using it. So finally, on this platform, I would just want to show us how a, a virtual machine is. So I, I created one recently, and this machine is running. And this machine has a Windows Server operating system. And then this machine is currently located in South Africa. Okay, so if I open this machine, if I open this machine, what are the information that you can gather from there? A whole lot, but that is not for, for today. But if I want to enter this machine, there's a simple thing I can do. 
I'll copy this public address. This public address. Of course, the machine is started because it's already running. It's already running. And then I do what we call an RDP. So I will remotely connect to this machine. So this uh, this little pop up here is called remote desktop connection. This thing will give me the opportunity to connect remotely to that machine. Remember what the machine is, it's somewhere in South Africa. And here I'm in Nigeria. So that will now take us back to what we call the data center that we spoke about yesterday. Remember, briefly, we spoke about it briefly yesterday. So now, I come to my machine. It's asking what's the name of my computer. I'll put the IP address. This IP address, the one I copy here, is the name of the computer. The IP can also be the name of the computer. And then I try to connect. We ask for the username and password. Say if you remember or whatever. And then this machine is connected. So the moment you see this, this is called certificates. It's called certificates. It's telling you that, okay, I can authenticate you. You have certificates. You have power. You have the certificate, as in, you have the right to enter that machine. You understand that it is safe. So it's called, you said this certificate is not from a trusted certifying authority, but it's a, it, it is certification to tell you that, okay, you can go in. So you say yes, and then it's configuring. No, what do you notice? You notice that there is another machine here. Can you see? You can see a whole new desktop. A whole new desktop. So this machine is the one that is in South Africa. So for example, now if I bring up the, the browser, If I bring up the browser, remember, so if I do like this, see, this is my normal machine, this one. This is the machine that I enter now. So if I say fast.com, let me reduce this machine. So let's come to, to this place. This is my normal machine, my physical machine here. And I say fast.com. And the reason why I'm showing you all of this is to let you know how you can take advantage of this when the time comes. Now, um, this fast you are looking at is measuring the speed of my internet. As I'm looking at it now. So can you see? He's saying that the speed of internet is 13 mega megabyte in one second. That's the meaning of Mbps. Megabyte per second. 13. So you can carry mil, uh, 13 million bytes of data in one second. That's because I'm using MTN now for my data. So now let me now go to. Let me go to the machine that we created. Look at this one. The one in South Africa. It gives me 900 and 690 megabytes per second. So the reason why you need to now understand how a data, how a data center works. You don't need to understand fully, but just to have an idea 
like I was just trying to explain to you, before we now go fully to the class. So, like I tried to show you, so it's a, data, a data center is a facility that centralizes an organization's shared IT operations and equipment for the purpose of storing, processing, dissemination of data and application. So yesterday, I showed you just an image of how your data center look like. So basically, this is how your data center look like. Now, this speed that you saw the other time, that 690 MPS you saw that time, they are, they are all of this. That is the way all these machines communicate with each other within the data center. That's that's what you are seeing. This, but me, why this speed is the one coming from MTN Nigeria? You know what I mean. But the other one, like I said, this one is the one in the data center, Microsoft data center. You understand? So if can come with screen. Okay, so let me explain to you. There's a data center here. And these are your server. You have a server, you have another server, and you have another server. Don't worry about what I'm asking. So all these boxes that I'm, I'm, I'm drawing, they are the one here. I see data center. As you can see, all these boxes, all these boxes I'm drawing. You understand? So this one is in the Keja. This one is in Badagi. Let's say this one is in SAVI or oh, Ibejuleki. You understand? So now this data center belongs to Microsoft. This data center belongs to Microsoft. This one belongs to Microsoft. Now you know that all of these data centers are in Lagos, but they are in different locations in Lagos. So what they will now do is that, you know, I was showing you one wire the other time, so that you can see. So all this wire, all this cable. Can you see? All this cable. They carried the, all this cable. You can see how big this, this is. So you can see how this cable. Can see how big they are, all these internet cable. So they will lay all those cable, they will connect to each other like this. From one server to another server, from one server 
to another server. So all of this, you can see that they can communicate with each other. So this is where you have your your 690 now, Mbps. You understand? Inside this data center. So this one too, we communicate with each other. Okay? This one too, we communicate with each other. This one too, we communicate with each other. So as this one, we communicate with each other. Okay. You communicate. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I okay, can hear so you. This, okay, good. So this one too, we communicate with each other. Okay. So now you can see how they are communicating with each other. All these servers, all these components. Through all this cable. See all these cables. See the way they will be communicating with each other. You get all these data. Just imagine what I'm just trying to tell you within the data center. Now, this circle, this data center here, we now communicate with this one. This one too, we communicate with this one. This one too, communicate with this one. Do you understand now? So here they will lay a fiber cable. So the speed of this one alone is almost like two G two Gbps. Two Gbps. Are you getting the idea? So you have an idea of how this your data center works. You know. So I won't go beyond that. So that you, you will stick with what the class really entails. Like I said, always draw, drag me back and ask your question. You know, this is an opportunity to ask question, please. Like I said. So at this point, any question? At this point, any question? Question. I have any a question. Okay, okay, go ahead. Fantastic, Debbie. <laughs> yes, sir. You said something about um, having a certificate to have says the machine like why are you talking about machine yes and i know that so i didn't really get that part like is there any special thing to get a certificate you really get that part very well okay um i know there are two people in this class that are that are familiar with that so okay this is it when it comes to, to some certain things in IT, especially when it comes to security around computers and some certain things, there's what we call trusted, trusted CAs, certificate authorities. It, they are very deep, okay? They are very deep. They are very deep. Mm -hmm. I would just say, don't worry yourself about it for now. The reason being that it is very deep. So now let me off this server. I'm going to end this remote session, as you can see. That is, this is the server that is in South Africa. So I want to leave the server and come back to Nigeria now. Okay. So if I come back here, the server is still running. 
see, it's still running. I didn't shut it down. So let's say I want to sign in again to explain to you. So if I copy this email address again, I mean, if I copy that public address again, and I say RDP, This is the same number 20.128. I say connect. So now this is the certificate you're talking about, right? Yes, sir. Exactly. So anytime you see this, it's telling you that your server or your machine, your virtual machine. Remember, look at it here. Can you see the name here? They call it virtual machines. Anytime you see this, when you're trying to log in, anytime you see this. Is that saying, ah, okay, well, this thing has finally work, or is working well. If you don't see this, you can never enter that machine. This page that is saying, you said the identity of the remote computer cannot be verified. Do you want to connect anyway? Yes, I want to connect. Now, the remote computer could not be authenticated due to problem with the security certificate. It, it may be unsafe to proceed. Why? You want to enter a machine that is remote. Remote means it is not where you are. It is far away from you. So what this is telling you is that, okay, take the authority to go and enter into that machine. It's like a pass card. Do you understand? It's like a pass card. Okay. So he's saying this certificate is not from a trusted satisfying authority. So there are certificate of certificate authorities that. The, for example, Microsoft. So if Microsoft created this thing, they will tell you, oh, it's safe to enter and all of that because of ACA. You know, it's just warning you that they ask you, my hand no day. You know that kind of thing. That's what this is all about. Did you get? Any other question? Yes. Any other question? I have another question. Go ahead. You thought about a like CBC something that keeps all data together. Is it CBC server? Uh, it's just a link. It can be Are Debbie they? server. It can be Debbie server. It can be fantastic Debbie. It can be called anything. Okay. You understand? It's just okay. a name that came up from my head. You understand? Why? Oh, from your head? Yes, from my head. From my head. In as much as in as much as our class does not entail too much of a Azure platform, yeah, I would okay. Let me let me cancel this. Let me cancel this. If from here you can create, if I say okay, create another virtual machine for me, it's just for it, just to answer that your question, just to answer that your question. So can you see? Look at this place. You see. Virtual machine name. Can you see? Yes, sir. So I can call it Fantastic Devil. So you see, I can call it Fantastic Devil. So after I created the machine, it will be seen it as Fantastic Fantastic Devil. So you can call it anything you want. You understand? Any other question, please? Yes, sir. Any other question? Any other question? Okay, I would I would want to give us an assignment at this point. Before we go on, so I want us to write it down. So we, we have one week to submit, and you are going to be submitting via email your assignments. So Okay, let me type it out so that you can so Okay. Uh, I'm going to type it out. 
let me type it out. So like I said, please feel free to ask questions. Nobody is an island of knowledge. So let me just type it out. So can you increase the front size? I will, I will, don't worry, let me just skip that for you. Sorry, please. Can I just send it to our email? Yeah, I will. I will tell you where you send it. As I'm, I mean, can you just send the question to our email? Yes. No, there is no need of sending it to the email now. We can, we can write it out here. Just write it out. Oh, don't worry. I will drop it. Yeah, yeah, on the platform. We will drop it on the platform. But you will have to send your own answer to our email. Understand. So we are in a remote world now, so that make it easier for everybody. So you are going to be differentiating between the rule. So this is what you're going to be doing. So data analysts, what do they do? How much do they earn? Database administrator, what do they do? How much do they earn? Like I said, I'm putting how much they earn there too. Do you understand? Data analysts, what do they do? How much they earn? Their job role. How much they earn?
There's something I didn't have. Okay, so, so now we have the assignment. The, the reason why we are giving the assignment is to also stimulate your mind to let you know oh, what's, the, what's the benefit. So you can see. So it, is, it helps you to also stimulate that, oh, this is what I'm expecting. Okay, and then it will also help out. Okay. I need, I need to. Okay, so um, the assignment is given. So so let's move to the next part of this class. So we are going to be looking at core data concepts. Explore rules and responsibility in the world of data. Describe concepts of relational data. Explore concept of non relational data, explore concept of data analytics. So, because of, you know, remember our class is two times a week. So, we are going to be rushing, we are going to be rushing you because after today, we we'll go purely practical. Because yesterday and today now has, has been more of introduction and all of that. But there are some concepts you need to understand. So, that when we are talking about data, you will not be saying, ah, which one is this? I don't think I understand this. It looks like I can't, I can't get it. So, and like we said, because you have paid, there's an exam coming up that we would want you to take advantage of to ground your feet in the data world to say, okay, now I want to start this data analytics stuff. So let me start from the primary school of it. So in the next three months, in the next three months, we want you to have written that exam. And part of it is that we will guide you into how you can get this exam and then get you registered. And at the same time, you know, because you are a member of this class, then we will help you to study and then structure into how you can pass this exam. Then the next one is Power BI exam. We will also change you into how you can get to your Power BI. But it's just that, what we promise you is that the, for the first level, which is fundamental, we can help you get for free. But for the next level, which is fundamental, which is Power BI, you will really have to pay for that one. Data analytics is serious. 
Then the third one, which is data engineering, for those of you that have decided to go into data engineering, you will also have to write that exam too. But don't worry, we are here to just guide you into it. So now, I believe that uh, I have... Okay, before I start this, there's a one more thing that I need to show you before I start this. One more thing, one more thing, one more thing. There's one more thing I need to show you so that we know that I've shown you all the platform needed. Okay, as you can see, I brought something up. It's called Azure Data Studio. So I was not able to speak with this about this one yesterday. Remember, I spoke about SQL Server yesterday for those of you that was in class. So we spoke about SQL Server. We spoke about um, Power BI, you know. You, we, I showed you how this thing works, at least minimally. But now there's this one that we also need, that I also need to show you. It, it's from that Azure platform. You know, I just showed you that Azure now, where we run our virtual machine. It's a dedicated engine for data analysis. Dedicated, for this one can, can write scripts, it can write notepad, notes, uh, can write notebook. There's one called notebook. It helps you to write some other scripting languages for data analytics. So what Microsoft did is to compile all those, anything you need for data analytics and put it on your Azure Data Studio. So it's trying to load. So because as you can see, so you can see Azure Data Studio. Remember the SQL Server you saw yesterday was also called SQL Server Management Studio. So when you are hearing the word studio, they're telling you it's a platform that you can also do a whole lot. It's a platform that you can also do a whole lot. Look at this. You can you can connect. Okay, you said create a connection. You can connect to a data database instance through this connection that we have. You can run a query from here. You can create a notebook. This is the notebook I was telling you about, where it helps you to do your automation. Automation. Okay. Then you can deploy a server. Like what we did. This, you know, when Fantastic Debbie was asking questions. It was asking question about that server that we that we deployed. Can also this can also help you create, create a new instance of relational data service. So from here you can create a server, a sequence. Do you understand? Then you can run a lot of stuff. So if you look at this side, this is this is a server already. I already have this server. This server is also connected to your sequence studio. You can have your server, you can have your Azure platform. Okay, so the server is running. See, look at that Azure. So you see, sign into Azure. So which means that if I have a server on Azure, you can sign in from here, it will automatically pick your server and then you start working. So for those of us that are going to do data studio, I mean, for those of us that are going to do data engineering, we are going to be, you know, using that platform. We are going to be using that platform. So have it at the back of your mind. Is a whole lot, is a whole lot for you. You understand? So that is why we are going to be dedicating our weekend for this. So see, there's a server here. You know, all you need, to, all you need to do is to just authenticate into the server, and then. So if I authenticate now, I think this server. Let me see that. I change the name of that server. Okay. Let me see the password. Not really sure. Should connect. I hope I'm not ditching out too much of information so that we can. Okay, it's not connected. I have to. Okay. It's not connected. I have to look for. I have to look for. Is it the sound? I 
to look for that sound. Let me see. It's not connected, that means the server is on. Let me do my own. No, no, not secret. Let me come to window. No, Microsoft Server 2019. Um, put this on. In fact, this one is even lightweight. It's, it's lightweight because so server services. So my server is running. It's Someone is going to put on the Okay, let me just continue because if I do the other server, it's, it's going to be too heavy and it's going to slow down the system. So, To find a way of copying the server here. So once once we are able to connect to the server, it it, it just you know pops up. So like I said, this is one of the another tools we are going to be using. So when the time comes, I'm going to be using this tool. So it's called Azure Data Studio, and it's a very powerful tool. So let me just close it. Let me close the server so that it won't. So I'll copy the server stuff out here. So let me let me go to So like I said, we're going to be looking at the core data concept today. All right. So how do we explore core data concept? So we are going to be identifying how data is defined and stored, characteristics and relational and non-relational, describe and differentiate data workload, 
describe and differentiate batch and batch screening. So um, what is data? Okay, for us to say I want to be a data analyst, you must know what you really want to work on. So your data are a collection of facts, a collection of the numbers. They can even be a description. They can be objects. For example, your JSON script. It can be stored in a structured, semi-structured, and unstructured way. Okay. So how do you mean structured? For example, when you have a table, when you have a structured data, when you have a table, you say, okay, for example, if you have any Excel sheet, you have any Excel sheet that has names, phone number, address, that becomes that becomes a structured. That becomes a structured data. Why? Here we can have what we call here you can have what we call serial number. You can have first name here. You can have first name. You know. You can have last name. You can have email. You can have phone number. You understand? You understand? So then all those information are supplied. Why? Where you have first name, you cannot have email there. Where you have phone number, you cannot have last name there. So that's it's like filling a form, you know? It's like filling a form online, online form. When you fill any form online, let's say you see online form. So it's like filling the form online. When you fill any form online, let me show you. Let's Okay, so as you can see, is that filling a form online? Okay, this might even not. You can see each each column asking a, a certain thing. You can see each column asking asking a certain thing. Each column asking. Let me let's try another form. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, let's check this one. Okay, this form looks. No, this one. So look at this. He said, please provide information. We we all have been filling form before, whether we like it or not. We've been filling form. So this where they say email address, you know you cannot put your you cannot put your phone number there. You understand? You can't put your phone number there. Why? If you put number 080567, it will not submit. Because this particular field here, this field has been configured to, to, to collect some certain form of information. I don't know if you are understanding what I'm saying. 
that certain form can be either float, what we call float, which is your decimal, can be virtual, variable character, it can be numerals. Do you understand? Those are the different things. So here now, you put your email address. But remember that your email address can, can contain numeral, which is, let's say, adidotson1 at gmail.com. Adidotson234 at gmail.com. Do you understand? It can contain special character as at. You know that at is a special character. But your first name, there, will no, there can't be a special character in your first name. There can't be an iPad stand in your first name. You know what I mean? It should be variable character only, which is, you know, A to Z, you know, which is A to Z. Same thing as your first name, your last name, your job title, your company. Then, of course, here they said, what are the type of profession? They already, they've already defined this one. All you need to do is just to select. So the other one you provide, you know, you provide an address, then you have country, then you have cities. Remember, your country has been at me. But there's only one thing that is not here, phone number. So imagine there's a phone number here. What sort of type of data type do you think your phone number will be? That's numerals. Because your phone number is numeral. You cannot put 082Z12432. It's not possible. It won't submit it. So this is a structured way of collecting data. Structured. A structured way of collecting data. So if you go back to, if you go back to our, if you go back to our, yes, if you come back here, this is a structured way. And then what is trying to tell you here is that if this is a table, you know, this let's say let's call this one table one. Sorry, just a minute. Let's call this one table one, C one. So let's also let let this one be T one too. Let's say this same table here is there. T1. So this one is T2, table 2. This one is T3, table 3. You understand what I mean by our table now? This one is T4. So all this line is telling you that there's a relationship between, there can be a relationship between here and here. For example, remember in your table 1, you have serial number, first name, last name, email, phone number. Then let's say this table is called customer customer info, customer information, you know, customer information. So all the, all the customer has their information here. Let's say you have a supermarket and then they are making order or you have an online store. This one becomes your order, your table. That is every order that was made. So you can decide to ascribe your customer, what we call a customer ID. So here we can have C.ID here. So customer A, we have 001. Customer B, we have 002. You understand that kind of thing? So which means that here you can also have, you know, this table. You might not have the, the full name here, but your table can contain what we call your CID, your customer ID, and say, okay, 001 made this order. This, 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 this. You understand? So that means this table. Has a relationship with this table. Why? Because here there's a customer ID here. You understand? So this customer ID and this customer ID is making them to relate. It's like your brother and your sister. As a man, you are married to your wife. Okay? Your wife is also married to you, but she's from another family. You understand that idea? So one way or the other, you become blood related. Why? Because there's a relationship between the two of you. Because you have a child together. You understand the idea? So, table three, two, let's say, maybe there's one column two here, like email. 
let's say email. Then this email too is somewhere here. So that means there's a relationship between this table and this table. This other table and this table too. Maybe customer experience. You say customer experience. Whatever it is, maybe for customer sales. You know, anything can be. You look for, okay, there's a relationship between this and this. But if you look at it, there's no relationship between this one and this one. You know, we are just saying it's hypothetical. But if you look at it, you can trace the relationship from here down to here, down to here, and down to here. Though there's no direct relationship from here to here. You understand the idea? So this is how your, your data can be structured. Now move to your semi structured data. Who's your semi-structured data? One way or the other, look at this data. You can see it says document one. This one looks like the title. I just want you to follow me because you really need to learn because you know of your commitment to this class. Now you say document one customer ID. Now look at this. Is it semicolon? This colon here. Yeah. And this column there. What do we have here? Customer ID. Can you see? Customer ID. Then you have your name. You have your last name. You have your street. You have your number. Do you understand? So customer ID, this is the ID. Name, this is the name. Last name, this is the last name. Address, street. Are you getting the idea? So this one's to look like as if this table. Arranged in a way that is called um, key and value. That's how they are arranged. So, an example of this, I will show you guys because this is how you can also learn. So, let me show you. An example of it. So I have a special software here that can open a semi structured data. It's called Notepad. Of course, you all know you all have you all know what a notepad is. When you put your this here in search engine, you see notepad. But here, Look at it. This is even a dot YML. I click on it. Now, this is an example of a semi structured thing. Can you see? XML. So, as you can see, the main title is City. That is, this document is titled City. I get what I'm saying. This document is titled City. So it's like saying number one city is there. Can you see? You know, the moment I highlighted this city, he also highlighted this other one. He's telling you that everything here is under this city here. See, the moment I highlighted this one, so you can see pay more you know, all of this and they are inside. This city. So this information can meet here. You understand now? So this is a semi structure. If you look at it, it's saying, okay, inside this city here now, you define what we call an ID. What's the ID? 52. Can you see? What's the name? Ashkamam. Which state? What's the state ID? This. State code. This. State name. Like, uh, whatever, somewhere in India. Country code. One. Country code, Afghanistan. Country name, Afghanistan. Latitude and longitude, you understand? So with this data now, we can locate each city on Power BI. Why? Because your longitude and latitude is there. And your Power BI has a graph. You can, a whole world map can come out of your Power BI. A whole world map. I don't want to open Power BI now because, you know, you understand what I'm trying to say? So now you, this is your semi-structured data. 
Look at it. It is called dot XML. This is the extension. There is another one called JSON. J S O N. The JSON script is like a script, but it's a semi-structured data, just like the other one too. If you look at it, if you look at it, this one has curly brackets. See, whatever that is inside this place is inside this place. So as time goes by, you will understand this sign and this sign. As time goes by. So here, this one open the bracket, the whole thing. This one here, open the, the whole thing. So the one that permits it, see, you can see the line. It goes down. It goes down to this place. Where is it here? To this place. So all this information is just on it's just one entry. How do I mean one entry? Like one row. Imagine you, you have it on a table. This would be like one row. You get the idea. All this information I highlighted. Why? Because the 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 curly bracket started started from here and see see line two. It started from line two and then the curly bracket ended in line 42. I mean ended with self line 44 rather ended in line 44. So see the whole lot of information this thing contain country ID, name of the country, ISO, this, 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 this. So very different form of information. It's like a form, but it is kept in JSON format. J O J S O N. You understand the idea. So I hope you get what I'm trying to say now. So here for your semi-structured data, you have your JSON file, you have your XML file. Sometimes you can have your YML, you know, it's not that popular. But you can see they are all, almost like the same style of data collection. Then another one is your CSV. I know you are familiar with your CSV now, your color separator version. So it's the same information, but this, this one will be on the same row as if you know, you just be there. You just be back on that book. That's your CSV for you. So, but separated by comma. You understand what I mean? Okay. So, we have less than 10 minutes more for this class and then um, for today's class. And um, I would give like five more minutes. I will give five minutes so that we can ask questions. And um, you understand what I mean? So, because of course, now whether we like it or not, the class has started properly. And then, um, yeah, I'm trying to look for one. So now we've seen our structured data. Already we know what our structured data is. Your Excel. When you have data in Excel, when you have, I showed you your doc, the data in Power BI yesterday. You saw how it looks like. I don't want to bring it up because it will take time if I have you no know, other brought it up. So that you just see it. You already know now what it means. Of course, as time goes by, I will keep showing you. Then you have your structured data. See, you have your structured data. So you know what it means. Your social data means that you just have everything, everything in one place. Everything in one place. For example, yeah, look at my dashboard. All of you can see my dashboard. All of you can see my dashboard. So you can see a folder. You can see PDF file. You can see YouTube channel. You can see Power BI. You can see Google Drive. You can see VSC Player. You can see Chrome. You can see PSI Bridge Secure uh, Browser. You can see Adobe Reader. You can see Firefox. You can see PowerPoint. Another PowerPoint. Video, Google Video Stuff. Uh, RDP Machine. Uh, you know, images. See Passport. See Flyers. See Excel Sheet. So if I open 
your Excel sheet. This is where you see your. This is where you see your. Uh, how do I call it now? Your structured data. Okay. So as time goes by, you see, you begin to understand. Hey, look at it. Structured data. So this data, look at the count, 2,000 plus, 2,700. Structured data, under C, here, order ID. So for that you are ordering, what do you have here are your figures. You cannot see W here, you cannot see A W here, you cannot see, you understand what I mean? Here is continent. If you are not a continent, what are you looking for here? You can't be here. You understand? Here is country. If you are not a country, there's nothing you are looking for here. You understand? If you are not a city, there's nothing you are looking for here. Do you get? So when you look at, you know, if you are not a date, look at it, or that date. If you are not date, look at it. This this column, anything date. If you are not a date, you don't, you, there's nothing you are looking for here. So they are structured. That's what it means. Okay. So um with this uh i have come to the end of today's class and i believe that we will we will learn um something new for those of us which this field are new to i want to believe that we will learn something new all right so before we round up i would entertain one or two questions before we round up So we start from transactional and let's get it done. One or two questions, please. Hello? Okay. So you talked about the C. I had the question CSV. Is that under semi structured or structured data? Or is it structured data? Hello. Hello. I can hear you. I said when you were talking about type of data, you mentioned CSV. That is separated by a comma. So I'm asking, is it a type of is it is it under semi-structured or is 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 an unstructured or is or is a structured? Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Your yeah, CSV I can hear you. I'm going to get because of my structure. The structure. If, if I go back to this, see, look at it. The structure. It's only, you see, when you are downloading some data online, this is the best way you can download some data online. Why? Most data doesn't come with your Excel format. You know, the Excel is owned by, the Excel is owned by, by Microsoft, do you understand? So there are other tools too that can work, that can do what Excel is doing. We are just, everyone of us is just exposed to Excel. Do you know that Apple also have their own PowerPoint? But we, are, we called PowerPoint, PowerPoint, because Microsoft started it, and then the whole market is using PowerPoint to do PowerPoint. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Microsoft has uh, Apple has their own. It's called Slide. Sincerely, Apple Apple has their own. It's called Slide. Google as a company, they have their own. It's called Google Slide. This is it, yeah. Okay. Do I have it here? Yeah. Yeah.
Hey, well, I might not have it here, but but one thing, one thing that is common is that if, for example, if you want to download any data from online, the best form that it will come is in CSV format. So if you just separate your data, you know, see, look at the same ID. So all of these are, are your ID, okay? Then name, these are the name, state ID. This is the state ID. State code, this is the state code. State name. Don't be surprised. This information you are looking at here is the same information that is here in this XML. See, look at it. ID 52, name, Ashakama, state ID 33901, state code, BDS, state name, Badakasham, country, one, AF, Afghanistan, 30, 36 point something, 71 point something. Q. If I go back to your CSV, look at it. 52. Akasasham. 309. BDS. Bakasham. AF. Afghanistan. 36 point this. 71 point this. You can see the same information, but in different format. So your CSV, one way or the other, is structured because the way it appears, it's just the appearance. So that is why. When you see things like this, how do you want to, you know, now when you are seeing a table, you can know, okay, this is a table. But when I see something like this, number one, you're looking for names. You say, ah, okay, the next name is this. Okay, the next name is this. Oh, the next name is, is this. Okay, so what is the country? Is the country code? Is it not uh, disturbing? It's disturbing now. But with, with your Excel, you can say, okay, these are the, you see, 309, 309, 309, it's easier for you to, to point, do you understand what I'm saying? It's easier, you know. That's it. Any other question, please? Any other question? Deborah is raising her hand. Deborah, please. Oh, Deborah. Okay, fantastic, Deborah. A question, please. We have Debra. We still have Debra on the call. Why we wait for Debra to ask a question? Any other person can go if you have a question to ask, please. Okay, with the likes of um, another person, I would say thank you so much for your time and uh, kindly um, go through the assignment and let's submit before Friday so that we can reach out to us and then um, we can start, you know, doing our deployment and practical stuff. By next week. Thank you so much. Over Thank to you, you, sir. Uh, right. Thank you sir. Madam. Thank you. Madam. Thank you, everyone. Before you go, I have an announcement to make. Um, let me first say thank you for your time. And I hope you did enjoy today's class. Um, thank you. I'm going to be sharing a link for us to feel. Um, it's a feedback form. Please, we need your feedback as as much as possible. So we are able to know where to improve and um, make sure we get the most of this class in <laughs> subsequent classes. Thank you, everyone. And I do wish you a beautiful week ahead. Thank you. Please don't forget to do your assignments. And um, if you also already you have the link for the Excel training and you haven't done the Excel training that we, we shared, please try to find time. The knowledge is not a waste. Just find time to, to watch the video. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.